hi everyone welcome back to my channel it's been a while since i posted videos today i wanted to give you update on my euphorbia collection about a year ago i made a video where i showed you each one this year i got a few new ones that i'm excited to show you that they're a little bit more rare so i'm gonna quickly go downstairs grab some trays with euphorbias and i'll be back so here I have my Euphorbia Gwyn Terry. Um, this one I have for, for a few years and I this summer had to separate it. I think I separated two branches, propagated some little ones because it got really big. Uh, yeah, I think it's a little bit underwatered. I think I had some drying of the leaves. You can see close up uh, i did take it outside and it did got some burn when it got on a direct sun facing south i didn't use anything to protect it from sun unfortunately it didn't burn a lot there is a little bit of burn here i really don't mind it this one here is new one it's euphorbia lactea cristata and I got it from Mountain Crest Gardens. Hasn't been changing very much since I got it, but I think it's established. When I pull it, it's firm in the soil. I don't rather water it very often and I keep it here in the dining room. This one did not go outside. Then next I have two of my euphorbia persistence i got him from a same person um i think his name is mike on ebay um this one here i got a few years ago and it was looking pretty small and dried up until this year i took it outside and it grew quite a lot of branches as you can see and this one is more i would say swirly compared to this one so they're both a euphorbia persistence but they look a little different and look this one is having new branches coming out so you can see the difference and they both have codex here on the bottom yeah so yeah so this is euphorbia persistence i have two pots of it they're a little bit different, so that's why I'm keeping two pots. I have so many Euphorbia obesa, different kinds, either hybrid or Euphorbia visa, but I really, I think I really like those, so that's why I have a lot of them. So this one here is Euphorbia restricta. Looks like a, well, actually it has three branches. It has two here. And a third one over here and then i separated some branches for propagation these two are new i have to find the id for this one but i i ordered this uh it was an international like it was imported from outside of us and this one as well i thought that this is some kind of enopla hybrid I think this one didn't have ID and this one here does have ID, but I feel like it hasn't been doing anything like since I got it, which was like end of, I think fall, it didn't really, the, the roots didn't move. It's not establishing. So I tried to cut one of the roots and it was running sap. So it's still alive, but yeah, not established here. This is uh, the variegated corn cob that I started from cuttings. I got rid of the mother plant. I really don't like how this one looks when it grows, runs amok, you know, and has branches growing branches. I just don't particularly care. It's the same thing with the regular green corn cob. I, uh, it's not variegated. I also tend to propagate it and, keep a, a cutting or uh, 
cut the top off and then keep that so when when they get too big i don't like them this one here i ordered also it was imported plant it's doubly spina doubly spina euphorbia i'm really pleased with this purchase it got established really well really fast it's firm in the soil and the one that i had before um it is it just didn't look as perfect i'm i'm always looking for some better looking specimens of some of the plants that i already have and uh that one is in the conservatory and it's growing really well so so i might propagate some of this one this year we'll see this one here euphorbia petricola was such a slow grower didn't grow very much for a few years and this summer grew the most branches to date so yeah, I, the most growth I have seen since I got it for, for, I think, two years. So it's looking cute now. This one didn't really change. It's Euphorbia Shinsi. Uh, it has bloomed repeatedly, but it didn't grow new branches. I think this branch grew a little bit in length, but nothing really new and exciting with it. So this one here is really exciting i think about four and a half years ago i got the mother plant of euphorbia greenway and that one is a little bit more rare and it started having some yellow like corking on most of its body and i decided to take cuttings and during the summertime they rooted really fast look how pretty it looks i'm really happy with this one and then so it was three cuttings and each cutting started clustering so basically uh, that same cutting grows new pups from the bottom so this one has one two three three new ones growing this one this one has one and this one has two so i probably should separate some of this because they're not going to have enough place but i love how perfect these branches look yeah so the mother plant is in the conservatory and i will probably propagate that one again and maybe make a few more pots of of like this one so this is not all my obesas but i'm going to show you three that are in this tray so i have this one here that's been blooming that one was outside this year with the rest of the euphorbias then I have this little one that's like a um, hybrid obesa. And then I have this one here that has also hybrid. that has a lot of pups and it has been blooming. They're all a little bit different. And I have another one in the bedroom. And yeah, I think that's it. I think I have four obesas total. So here is my Euphorbia meliformis, variegated one. I had the one that had only one pup, and I gave that one away, and I got this one from Mountain Crest Gardens. Uh, they had really nice clusters, and they were really good price um, last year, like beginning of summer. So hopefully they will have again. Look how cute it is. And then next one here. This is the same one I had last year, really big one. I propagated that one and then I sold the big mother plant. It was just really getting like maybe two feet tall or more and pretty wide. This one grows really tall and grows a lot of branches. So I knew I'm gonna eventually have to start it from a smaller one. I think I will probably get rid of one of these. I don't know which one yet. I think I like this one better, but yeah. So interesting uh, story that I want to share with you. That's going to be also a tip for taking care of a problem that you can encounter with euphorbias. So I live in Michigan. Uh, winters are uh, harsh and long. And so I was keeping my euphorbias or a lot of them under lights during the winter time. And uh, last year I lost some that were under lights. And this year 
I had some that are thriving under lights, some that are uh, doing okay or struggling a little bit, and then some that are really, really unhappy. I didn't know what it is. I thought maybe uh, I overwatered and had a root rot because you know when the when the plant is drying up it can be two reasons for drying up. It's really, really dehydrated and thirsty, or actually there is no root system that can get that water in because there was a root rot at some point and then the roots dried up. So these two particular euphorbias that I really love because they're so pretty and swirly. Uh, one is Euphorbia stellata special, this one here. Uh, you could have seen it uh, in, in my past videos during the summertime. And this one that I got more recently, Grown Waldi. I had this one before, but uh, one I lost, it dried up. And the other one, I think I didn't like how it looks, so I wanted to get a better looking one. I love how this one looks has like a little codex and um, four branches that have really nice swirl. So they were getting so soft. I would touch them and you know, like just they, they were not looking good. So from week to week in the last month, I would come once a week uh, to check all the plants under lights, give them water. I would water, check second day, third day, and it would so always so dried up. I didn't know what's going on at this point i was considering i'm going to lose them i was particularly sad about this one it's a bit more rare look at that beautiful swirl uh, this one was super soft so what i decided to do is to do a cut test uh, so here's my tip i took a knife and i cut it really low close to the soil level and when i cut it the sap started running uh, that told me that this is still alive. Uh, usually, in my experience, when uh, euphorbia uh, had a root rot, the, the roots dry up and the stem, and when you cut it, there is no sap coming out. Sap means that plant is still healthy. So I ended up soaking this plant with water in the water, and then I moved it away from light. I brought it here in the dining room and guess what happened in a few days it plumped up it's nice and firm as i'm touching it i am so happy i really didn't want to lose this one and i was surprised that it wasn't good because it bloomed you know so i i just really and it has a nice soil mix it has a little bit of non-organic mix but it, i think the problem with some of these uh, plants under lights, even if you have the best lights, like uh, good distance, uh, like spider pharma lights or some other ones, they just force plants to uh, go through this cycle of drying up and getting water much faster than they normally would. Uh, so it's just sort of forced. And uh, I think some, are okay with that and I will, I will show you some that do really well on their lights some tolerate it but they're not super happy and then there are some super unhappy like this one um, I think my um, is it Horda was very unhappy last year ended up losing it it completely dried up and and this whole year I didn't keep that one under lights it was in the dining room window so grown Walby, I did the same thing after this one recovered, I ended up soaking this one as well. And then hopefully I was thinking it's gonna recover and I put it in the dining room. And yeah, guys, this leaf is now, branch is firm, this one is firm, this one, yes, almost, and this one is still a little soft, but I think it's just getting back to normal. So I'm really happy to save these. So this is Groen Waldi and this is Stellata Special. All right, guys, this is the one that I lost yet last year and I was so sad. I think after I recorded the video, I realized that it's actually drying up, that it shrinked in size. Uh, and this one, is this is the replacement that I got right after. So I have this one for a while. I had it all through summer and then I had it, yeah full so getting close to a year 
but it has it grew a lot of pops these two pops were there and they grew bigger and then it grew one two well actually there is six of little ones growing in there if you can see so yeah this one i noticed is more sensitive to overwatering it's more sensitive to heat and uh unlike other euphorbias that i took outside left it in the harsh sun and water uh, a lot of rain water this one stayed inside in my dining room i don't water it a lot and uh, yeah so it's a little bit more fussy all right guys so this one here i am considering a starting over um i mean i like to see them as trees but i just have too many big things and i just kept cutting it because it would grow branches that grow branches so grandchildren branches <laughs> and then it's really hard to keep it in a window seal or around other plants and then when you cut it you know um yeah it, it doesn't look too bad uh, but i think it's just getting let's see a little too big so i have a lot of really nice branches i was thinking this one here if it's cut has three branch four branches actually would be really nice starter or this one here has three branches, really nice starter. I have some with two branches, uh, like this one here. There is a lot of these nice looking one branch. So that's the plan. I think I'm gonna probably very soon cut this one, propagate, have some for sale and uh, keep one or two for me, cuttings that I'm gonna root yeah it's gonna be hard because i have this plant for um over six years i propagated this one many times and actually mother plant is in the conservatory it's much bigger uh, so th this itself is pretty big too i don't think i'm gonna yet get rid of it this year but i think next year if it grows through summer and fall I may take a branch and um, uh, start all over. It's really pretty. I like it, but it can also grow very, very big. Next, here is my Euphorbia stellata. Happy, growing. This one was under light, um, but it seems to be content this one grew so much look at that that was the um, two and a half inch pot from Lowe's. was it two years ago look how full it is i think it's so cute kind of reminds to Cereiformis. this one has grown so much as well i think i probably should separate some of these pops because it's really crowded and then some are gonna be deformed if they're not in wider pot or maybe give it a wider pot maybe i could do that that would look cool finding a some kind of nice wider pot i have a few of the euphorbia red trigona last time i didn't have it all of the big mother plant is in conservatory but i took some cuttings this year I grew this one that grew branches and i have another one that i'm going to have for sale i'm going to probably propagate some more of this one i kind of missed it so i decided to start it all over again i have a lot of euphorbia nuti these are some of the rooted cuttings but i have one nicer one but this is my nicer one um it has caught x and a lot more branches i propagate this one a lot this is one of the most prolific growers fast growers so yeah here's, here is my one of my aruginosa i propagate this one a lot mother plant is in the conservatory um, i have a bunch of propagations here at home 
this is the one that I propagated a year ago, a cutting. So look how full it is. So this one will grow, really grow for you. You get the rooted cutting and you're going to have this in a year. And then you can separate your own branches. It really is pretty. All right, so this one here and this one here, I'm not 100% sure, but they look like they're the same. Uh, so I bought this one a year ago. It's It was sold as Euphorbia Valaris. Yeah, Valaris. I don't know, they look different a little bit, but they're also very similar. So I'm wondering if this is the same plant. We will see. Here's my two variegated uh, Monodanium Ritchie. This one I almost lost. It had a root rot and it so quickly uh, rooted after I did the surgery and separated the pops. So it's happy again. Uh, this is another one that I got. And then I have a regular one that's also been having stress colors. So it looks a little bit like it's variegated, but you can see close up, see variegation on this one. This one is green. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I've been, oh, what happened with this guy? I don't know. That one doesn't look happy. I just um, actually cut off some of this one uh, to, to propagate. So yeah, I have one that doesn't look happy here. This looks yellow. I'm going to have to investigate. But monodanium is like one that I really enjoy. And this is my Euphorbia stuffy. Uh, started growing another branch. It has three branches and it's been blooming a lot this year. I think it's so cool. I love the edges on this one. And just the look, the shape of this one, I really like. There was a similar plant to this one that I didn't have ID last year. That one I lost. From the time I got it, it had some kind of spots. I don't know if it had some kind of pest or what it is, but it never made it. Next one here, I have Euphorbia opuntioides uh, because the branches look like opuntia cactus. This one has some corking at the bottom of the stems. Um, and I was thinking that it would be cool to try to propagate this one. It has some really nice branches. It has beautiful blooms and bloomed a lot this year. So I actually took some cuttings. So we will see. Hopefully I can root this one. Then here is my Monodanium Tanzanian Red. I was really hoping this year to get the branches out of this one but no branches yet. Just a lot of blooms all through the year. So pretty and a beautiful color. Here's my green corn cob. It was, it just grew ran, run amok and it was so big that I cut the top off and that was the top that I rooted with some branches. Yeah, let me show you all my two big lens hybrids and obesa hybrids <laughs> there is so many of them <laughs> all right so this is one of my to be glance obesa hybrids this one here so cute i love these guys and then i also have this one here this one unfortunately i ended up dropping something on it uh, so it broke the branches. So I think I was trying to root some of the branches. So hopefully it will grow some new ones. This one is the darkest, the most stressed color. And then I have these guys. Oh, look how cute they are. They're just slightly different, but I will probably try to propagate a lot of this one because they're just so cute. And then this one here is a new one. I've been trying to search for this one since I saw it at the Grand Rapids Conservatory Botanical Garden. And it's called, I think, Serendipita. 
Serendipita euphorbia. So it reminds a lot to Aeruginosa or Bioensis, but it has a unique coloring. And I just noticed that it started growing two new branches. So I purchased two rooted cuttings that had a little pops coming, but then here it is, some more growing. Super exciting. This also is purchased from last, was it a year ago, from Lowe's 2-inch pot. Look at how big it is. Yeah, it looks really good. Really happy. Maybe, I don't know, what do you guys say? Should I separate this one or just leave it be? Propagate some and then, I don't know. All right. Well, I have a few more to show you still. So here is my Euphorbia bioensis. I cut... Uh, the one, the, the stem in the middle, I really didn't like how it looks anymore. And uh, after I cut that middle stem, it just became dried up. I don't think it's a root rod, but it doesn't look very good. So I might just divide it in half and start two pots of Bioensis. Um, this is the one that's been really happy under lights and just in general happy. Uh, this is Euphorbia coprae. Um, I just cut one of the branches that was coming from the bottom and I'm going to try to root it. Uh, really pretty. I have been really enjoying this one. And look at all the growth from the bottom and a big one, like I said, I removed. This is the newest addition, uh, Euphorbia, I think it's Chroma. Look at the colors and the pups. This is just a cutting, so it's going to need to root. This is my Euphorbia ingens, Monstrosa. This one hasn't changed a lot. Maybe it just grew a little bit in height. I think when I got it, maybe it was like that. So it grew a little bit, but it's not a ton of change. This one didn't go outside, just stayed in the dining room. So I don't know, maybe it would grow more if it was outside on the sun and rain. Euphorbia Tanzanian zipper plant. As you can see, it is big. I will probably have to separate some pups from this one, but it's looking really good. I wonder if these kind of plants like Cereiformis and uh, zipper plant would do really, really well in like wider pots because they cluster. Uh, and then... I haven't been completely satisfied with this one. Is This is Moroccan um, Euphorbia Racinifera Moroccan Mound. The reason why I wasn't satisfied completely is it gets this corking. It's always dry. I think this is because I didn't water it enough. Um, it also had a really ugly middle stem that I cut. So there is a hole there, but it's not really visible. It still looks good. I cut some, I took some cuttings here and I'm propagating them. And there is hybrid and then Medusa. Uh, this one also likes to be cooler during the winter time. We're in my plant room and I have a few euphorbias here that are too big to bring to the dining room. Here is my sticks on fire that I have cut so much this year. And it's looking good, happy here, has some red. So I decided to put it together with the rest of the plants because I, th I think I can maintain this easily uh, 10 degrees uh, Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit. So I don't have to worry about them being cold. And then here's this one. Seems so happy. This is my variegated amnek. Uh, so it's spending winter here. It's really tall. No pups yet. I really want some pups. And this one here is just so beautiful. I purchased it as a cutting from Ted's Greenhouses and it's established. Um, here is something I've been doing, guys. Paint by numbers. I would highly recommend this particular paint by numbers. It's a succulent arrangement of paint by numbers. 
it it looked discouraging in the beginning when I started because I started from this corner that didn't have much of anything. But then later on, as I progressed, uh, it turned out really, really good. I really enjoyed doing this one. And it's so calming. So I ended up putting it in the plant room and it's in Ikea frame. I almost forgot about these that are in the window seal of the guest room. Um, so I have this one that grew a lot since the last year. I even propagated some branches because it grew a lot of branches and branches grew branches. Looks really pretty. And if you remember my Euphorbia trigona, it got really big. I think it was like four feet tall with a lot of branches and I propagated, I think four smaller branches. This summer they grew all these extra branches. You can see the dry leaves because I haven't been watering these guys as much. I forgot about them. So they're gonna grow leaves as they grow taller. They're gonna grow them on top. Uh, and then I also got this one this year that's pretty similar to a regular trigona, except that it has variegation. I think it's called super white, something like that. I'm gonna have to find name, but all the leaves that grow, too bad that I can't show you right now, except these two because I didn't water this one as much. So here on the lights, I do have a lot of uh, propagations. Here is some restricted uh, greenway bioansis, um, a lot of aeruginosa, nuti, there is some variegated monodanium, regular monodanium, racinifera. So, yeah, I do propagate these every, I think, few times a year. I have some other propagations here. I, I suppose I didn't mention this one. I do have this euphorbia as well. I don't like the shape of this one, so I think I'm gonna root to this cutting. Um, and then, yeah, I'm rooting this one, and I haven't shown you the big mother plant that I'm getting rid of. This one is really fast, aggressive grower, and it grows like a big tree eventually if you keep it. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the Euphorbia tour. If you have any questions or if you would like to uh, hear more tips about how to propagate or grow Euphorbias, I'm going to post in the description link to my last year's video that I think was more detailed when it comes to tips. See you next time.